Crocker Mixes, and Wheaties, the Breakfast of Champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. You know, one of the best things about summer is those lazy afternoon picnics, and I bet your moms know about one of the easiest snacks ever, a marvelous Betty Crocker marble cake. Mmm, what could taste better with a cold glass of milk or lemonade from the thermos than a big slice of marble cake? And Betty Crocker marble cake mix is the mix in just one package that you can mix in just one bowl. There's no chocolate to melt, no extra bowls or pans to wash. And the same high-quality ingredients you choose yourself are right in the mix, including famous softer silk cake flour and pure vegetable shortening. You just add water and two fresh eggs for a cake that is high, light, and, well, absolutely perfect. Betty Crocker guarantees with all her cake mixes a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. Perfect or write General Mills, Minneapolis, Minnesota for your money back. Ask your moms to bake up a marvelous Betty Crocker marble cake for the next picnic your family plans. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Hail Silver. Hooray! <laughs> Grace Mooney, manager of a vast Circle B ranch near Centralia, Texas, was almost beside himself with rage when he called at a neighboring ranch house to see his friend Jack Parrott, gambler and cattle owner. Sit down, Rage. Sit down and calm yourself. What's wrong? You? This letter is from Claude Barron. He's the Easterner who owns the Circle B. Yeah, read what he says. He fired me as manager of the ranch. He's sending his son here to take my place. Oh. Baron must have finally realized that he's losing money on the range. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, but Mooney, it says here he'll let you stay on as foreman. Looks like he doesn't know you've been robbing him. I'm sure he doesn't. But his son is sure to know I've stolen money when he examines the books and bank records. You expect me to give back what you lost to me, playing cards? Oh, no, Jack, but I've You'll got... have two weeks before young Baron arrives. Draw all the Circle B cash from the bank and head for Mexico. I can't draw any more cash. Banker Cardiff told me so this morning. He had orders from the old man. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Race. Have an idea. Has Banker Cardiff ever met young Baron? No. Then suppose someone comes here in his place. Who? Flash Ogden, a pal of mine in Kansas. Oh. I'll send him a wire and tell him to meet us. <laughs> I'll help you, Race. And we'll both make a cleanup. The following week, in a town some distance from Centralia, Jack Paris and Race Mooney met secretly with a man from Kansas, Flash Ogden, and went over Paris's plan for waylaying Phil Barron. Barron's supposed to arrive in Centralia a week from today, Flash. Only you'll be the one who arrives. I'll be there with the banker to meet you, Flash. As soon as you're established as Phil Barron, you can start drawing cash from the bank. Right, sir. But where do we get rid of Baron? At Arkansas Junction. The stage stops there to change drivers and horses. Now, here's how we'll work. One week later, the stagecoach from the east reached Arkansas Junction early in the morning. Oh, oh, oh. 
As the passengers left the stage, Flash Ogden stepped forward and said, Oh, Mr. Byrne, which of you is Mr. Byrne? I'm Philip Byrne. What do you want? Good. I'm glad I found you, Mr. Byrne. What is it you want? Well, first, let me introduce myself. I'm Robert Smith of Centralia. My ranch is next to the Circle B. Oh, yes. I've heard my father speak of you. Glad to know you, Mr. Smith. As the two shook hands, Flash looked around to make sure all of the other passengers, as well as the driver of the stage, had gone inside the building. Satisfied that his next move would not be seen, his manner changed abruptly. All right, don't raise your voice. I can't do as I say or I'll use it. If this is a hole. It isn't. Just walk ahead of me, along the side of the building. Baron thought fast and decided that the safest course would be to do as the man with a gun demanded. He held his hands at shoulder level and walked ahead of Flash, hoping someone would see his predicament. Just keep going to the woods straight ahead. Is this some sort of a joke? Maybe. Just keep walking. Presently, the two men entered the dark woods. Baron was about to speak when Flash, using his gun as a club, struck him on the head. <laughs> Lifting the unconscious Easterner across the saddle of a rented horse that waited nearby. Flash mounted behind the saddle and rode to a nearby stone quarry. Jack Paris was waiting beside a big boulder near the rim of the quarry. Oh, oh, there, oh. Is he dead? No, Paris. I couldn't risk a shot. People in the station might have heard it. I knocked him out. Here, help me get him onto the ground. Yeah, sure. There we are. Now let's see what he has in his pockets. Yeah, wallet, envelope, letters, money. More letters, more money, and more papers. Yep. Yeah, there isn't light enough to read this stuff. We'll have to strike matches or wait for more daylight. Yeah, we can read it if we get away from these rocks. No, 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 no. There's no rush. It'll be lighter in a few minutes. I want to see what we have. I want to be sure I have everything I need to pose as Phil Barron. Leading the still form of Phil Barron, Flash and Jack moved a few yards away from the rocks where there was better light. Yeah, now to see what we have. Hey, that looks like a check. Yeah. Cashier's check for $10,000. Jack, look at this. A letter of credit for $25,000. Yeah, and here's a statement from the Bank of Centralia. Hey, according to this, there's more than $30,000 in the account. Man alive, this is a bonanza. Hey, Jack, is Race Mooney a good friend of yours? That sucker? <laughs> No, no. He's just a good source of money. I've been using Mark cards to beat him for more than a year. He tapped the Circle B bank account and handed over cattle stock to me to split his losses. Jack. What's the matter? Baron's running away. Yeah, I see him. He's running toward the quarry. Hey, Baron, come back. I'll stop him. You got him, Flash. He dropped into the quarry. Yeah, but your bullet hit him just before he went over the edge. Well, that takes care of him. Now I'll be Phil Baron. Yes, Flash. And you better get back to the station. You got just enough time to make it before the stagecoach leaves. I'll meet you in Centralia. The Lone Ranger and Toto were breaking camp in the hills high above the stone quarry when they heard the shots. The masked man peered through binoculars in the direction of the sound and saw two men ride from the quarry, heading in opposite directions. Toto, go to the quarry and find out what that shooting meant. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Toto reached the stone quarry. As they dismounted, they heard from the depths the cry for help. Going below, the masked man and his Indian friend found Baron alive but injured. He was given first aid and carried to the top of the quarry. There, he identified himself, told what had happened, and what he had heard while lying on the ground, pretending to be unconscious. Right. One of them is going to the bank this morning with Mooney. He'll impersonate me and I'll get the money and... <laughs> he must have him. Him faint. Him need doctor. There's no doctor in Arkansas Junction. The nearest one is in Centralia. Hello, we'll place this man on your horse. You take him to the doctor in Centralia. Oh, me do it, Jim. Meanwhile, I'll ride cross-country to Centralia. Be our friend, Marshal Kiley, and have him arrest those two men at Solomoni. I'll be in Centralia at the Marshal's office and see you there later this morning. As soon as we get Baron on your horse, I'll go on ahead. Oh, 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 oh,
When the stage coach from St. Louis arrived in Centralia, Race Mooney was waiting with banker Joshua Cardiff. Mooney greeted Flash Ogden effusively. Yes, Bill, the men had breakfast at the nearby hotel, then proceeded to the Centralia Bank. They were already in the bank when the Lone Ranger entered the town through the hills and made his way along a deserted back street to the rear of Marshal Kiley's office. He dismounted and walked to the side door. But the door was locked, and on it was pasted a note which the masked man read. On to the county seat to deliver prisoner. We'll return about noon. Tom Kelly, Marshal. Mm, noon's almost two hours away. Better go to the bank myself. In Joshua Cardiff's private office, Race Mooney and Flash Ogden, posing as Philip Barron, casually brought up the matter of making immediate withdrawal of a sum in five figures. Cardiff opened the bank safe, which was in his office, saying, I keep cash available here in this cash box. More than 55000 No, no, you can't come in here. Mr. Carter, Mr. Carter. Uh, what in, Johnson, what's wrong? It's a hold-up man, sir. He wants it. Get out of my way. Mr. Hey, Carter. It's a mash man. It's a hold-up. Up with your hands. You're covered. You, clerk, get in here with the others. Yes, my hands are up. Flash, don't make a move towards your gun. What did you say? Oh, Mr. Carter. Let me introduce you to Flash Ogden. What are you saying? This is Mr. Philip Barron. That's what he says. I suppose this other fellow, Race Mooney, says the same thing. You are Race Mooney, aren't you? Yes, I am Race Mooney. I don't know what you're talking about. This is Mr. Barron. Of course he is. Even without Mooney say so, I have proof. But you, mister, you're a hold-up man. Don't think you'll get away with this money, though. The marshal... Marshal Kiley's out of town. I just came from his office. You did? Yes. Don't let this mask fool you, Mr. Carter. I'm not a thief. And this man isn't Philip Barron. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Sort of gives a guy a lift knowing that champions are made, not born. For instance, let's trace the inspiring story of Al Rosen, famed Cleveland Indian slugger. Let's go back when Al was small, an average boy, no champ at all. He practiced hitting, third base play, and ate his Wheaties every day, just as champs get on their way. Today, Al smacks that ball a mile, been eating Wheaties all this while. Why, Al Rosen's been eating Wheaties since he was a little guy, 22 years ago. Plenty of power all right in Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Now Al Sparkin, here's the pitch. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. to continue. For a moment, there was silence in the banker's office as the man stared at the Lone Ranger. Then Cardiff said, What's your game? You say you're not a thief, yet you hold a gun on us. You tell a cock and bull story about Mr. Barron being a person named Flash Ogden. Because he is Flash Ogden. He's a gunman and card sharp from which it all. You're crazy. What I say can be easily proven. You won't let that go. When Flash reached for his gun, the Lone Ranger was ready. His own gun barked first, and the bullet struck Ogden's wrist. My wrist? Edward, don't come in here. Get help. Round up the mini town. He's a hold up. Grab the mask, man, Race. Don't try it. Get back there, Mooney. Uh, yeah. Cardiff, you're a fool. I told you this wasn't a hold up. These men are... These men will help me prefer charges against you when you're arrested. You can't escape now. The whole town will be here after you in a few minutes. Maybe, but I'll do a few things first. Bert, open the door next to you. There. There you are. All right, men. Get into that closet. Big enough to hold all of you. And you, Mooney... Loosen your gun belt and drop it to the floor. Now get into that closet. There's a woman in the street. They're after you. You can't escape. I'll try, Carter. And to keep those crooks from stealing the bank's money, I'll take it with me. Now join the others in that closet. After locking Carter in the closet, the Lone Ranger quickly closed and locked the door between the office and the main room of the bank. Then, with a money box under his arm, hurried through the rear door and ran to the side of his horse. You big fella. 
Oh, the mob after it. Monsieur! They'll never catch me. Well, I must locate Hollow before he reaches town. Monsieur! The Lone Ranger sped along the wooded path that ran through the hills above the main trail. He had ridden only a few miles when he saw Tonto riding toward Centralia with a wounded Phil Baron propped in front of him on the saddle. Surprisingly, riding beside Tonto was Marshal Tom Kiley. The Lone Ranger reined his horse and called. Oh, oh, oh easy. Tonto! Hello, Marshal Kiley. Well, they see you, Silver. Let's get down there. Come on, boy. Oh, Silver. Oh, easy. Lotto, you made good time. Marshal Kiley, I'm certainly glad to see you. Hello there. I can say the same to you. I met Tonto at the crossroads. He's been telling me what happened to this fellow here. How is Baron Tonto? Him still banned. But pulse seem good. Him plenty strong. Doc Fairbanks is a good sawbones. He'll fix this fellow up if he's fixable. But tell us, what happened in town? I'm sorry I couldn't be oh, there. So am I. I looked for you, saw your note, and then acted on my own. The Lone Ranger quickly told of the incident in Banker Cardiff's office. He ended. And I escaped before they caught up with me. I imagine half the town was trailing me. Uh, what you want to do, Kimasabi? Baron told us well the two men at the stone quarry was named Jack. I didn't meet him, but he must be somewhere in town. There's a lot of men named Jack in town. Yes, but only one who wanted to kill Baron. I thought if he saw Toto carrying Baron to the doctor, he might try to kill Baron for certain this time. So I came to warn Toto to be on the lookout. And if Baron's in danger, we'd better take him to my home in the hills. Have the doctor go there to treat him. Good idea, Marshal. Toto, we'll transfer Baron to my horse, and you ride to town for the doctor. Uh-huh. Doc knows where my place is. <laughs> It was about an hour later when Tonto and the doctor reached the marshal's home in the hills. While the doctor was in the bedroom with the wounded man, the marshal said, Well, Tonto, what's happening in town? Should I be in there now? Our people in town, plenty excited. On way back, we see vigilantes. Them look everywhere for masked men who rob banks. <laughs> well, they'll never think of looking here in my house, that's sure. And Tonto... While you were gone, we fixed up a little plan, and you're in on it. Oh, that's good. I'll show you a cabin where we plan to trap the crooks. Ah. We'll go to the cabin and arrange things, Toto. Then you go to town and find Race Mooney. I'll make sure he's alone. Then tell him you know the inside story of the bank robbery and can lead him to the mask man. It was late afternoon when Toto located Race Mooney in the Dry Gouse Cafe. Mooney, with Flash Ogden and Jack Paris, had ridden with the vigilantes in their unsuccessful search for the man who robbed the Centralia Bank. When the furtive acting Indian drew Mooney aside and spoke to him, the ex-manager of the Circle B was excited. Finally, he went to his pals. Jack, Flash, huh? See that Indian over by the door? Now listen, he says he knows all about that holdup today. He says he knows where the masked man's hiding out with the money. He'll take us to the hideout if we give him $50. If he can do that, promise him a hundred. Sure, promise him anything. Pick a place like that. If he did. Well, let's find out. There's a light inside the cabin. Then we'll sneak up and find out if the engine's telling the truth. Yeah. Race, you stay here with the engine. Keep a lookout. All right. Watch him, too. Come on, Jack. Yeah, sure. Race, we'll be back soon. Well, there they go into the cabin. Engine, are you sure the money's up there? Of course he's sure. What? Marshal Kiley. Yeah, Race, I've been waiting for you with some deputies. Don't move or I'll plug you. And don't try to yell. This is a trap. Call at the end, Race. Man, handcuff him. All right, Marshal. Nice work, Tonto. Josh Cardiff, some more deputies, and Doc Fairbanks are up behind the cabin listening at the open window. Let's join them. I told you we had some fixing to do while you were gone. <laughs> Ogden and Jack Paris thought they had caught the masked man unprepared. 
They chided and reviled him as Flash counted the money in the bank container. Then, as Jack held his gun pointed at the Lone Ranger, Flash Ogden finished and said, Stranger, before we kill you, I'll ask one question. How'd you know we killed Philip Barron? How'd you know we'd be in the bank at Centralia? You didn't kill Barron. What? He's alive here in Centralia. He heard you talk, and he told me what you said. Oh. But more people heard you talk just now. Isn't that right, Marshal, Mr. Carter? As they sounded crooks gasped in alarm and turned toward the open window, the Lone Ranger leaped at Jack Harris and grabbed the man's gun. Then he sent a fist crashing into the crook's jaw, knocking him out. All right, turn around. You're covered. I know you can't use that bad wrist to shoot. So forget about your gun. Uh, you dirty rattler taking me like this. Stranger, your plan worked. You did it. Flash hogs in your goose is cooked. Declared we're not going to hold you for murder. Philip Barron's going to live. Right, Mr. Carter? Yes. Well, I'm glad. But above all, I must apologize to the mask man. I not only have the money back... I guess the apologies to me, Mr. Carter. I'm leaving with Toto. Apologize to Phil Barron when he's recovered. I'm sure you'll find him a much better man than that poor impersonator, Flash Ogden. Adios, everyone. Adios, Adios, Adios Marshal Kiley. Adios, my friend, and thanks for helping me again. Again, you said? Marshal, do you mean you knew that masked man before today? Why, certainly. Every lawman in Texas does, too. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. I'll do uh, <laughs> copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Monday.